Hello again and welcome to another video blog from acereport.org from the ACE, ACE, the Alliance for a Clean Environment. I'm Nick Lawrence and I'm here with Dr. Lou Cuthbert, who's the president and CEO of ACE, um, the Alliance for a Clean Environment. And today we're going to be talking about, in this particular segment, I should say, we're going to be talking about uh, radiation spikes so that you can find out whether or not the nuclear power plant has any way of possibly harming you and how we can detect those things. Lou, let's get into the, the, uh, this whole idea. Can, can it be detected and have things changed and, and what can people do about it? Um, the answer is yes to the first two questions. If we're going to spend some time explaining uh, how people might be able to use this information to protect okay. themselves and their families. Um, our, our organization has been involved in um, a number of related projects over several years. And on November 22nd, 2013, uh, we re received a phone call from uh, a member of the community um, raising a question and expressed, expressing concern to the point of alarm. Um, the individual who called uh, had um, a rat alert monitor, which we're going to talk about during this segment, Nick. And that monitor showed some very high numbers, some very high spikes mm -hmm. in terms of the numbers that they were seeing. Um, and they were concerned, so they, they um, contacted us and wanted us to look into this. And um, we did a couple of things pretty quickly. We notified the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, told them we were concerned. We had a report of these high numbers. Uh, and then we just started uh, collecting continuous data. Um, and there's a difference between continuous data and intermittent data. Okay. Inter intermittently, you can you know use one of these machines, this Rat Alert 50, just to see what the level is in the air in terms of uh, the radiation that can be monitored, airborne radiation. And continuous um, use of this machine or monitoring means you leave it on for an extended period of time, and you and you meticulously record a whole mm -hmm. lot of data and information. Um, and when you do continuous monitoring, you're much more likely to find the spikes. Uh, it's kind of like driving, you know, down the, the, the highway or uh, on an expressway. And if mm. you only check where you are, you know, every two, three, four, five miles, you know, you have some gauge mm. of where you are. Mm. But if you're continuously checking where you are, then you know what the situation is. That's what continuous monitoring does. So, Lou, is there, is there a level of radiation that exists constantly uh, at a certain level that stays pretty much the same. And then when you have a spike, that's when you start questioning what's going on. Correct. And, and that's, that's what happens around every nuclear plant. Right. Um, and what we've seen in this area um, over a period of years was uh, a fairly typical reading would be maybe 15. Um, and what we got with this um, intense monitoring was very different, very okay. different from that. What we found was uh, 20 to 30 percent higher levels of airborne radiation in terms of the spikes um, for several weeks starting, you know, the 22nd of November and then through the end of December. And then we continued to take a look in early January 2014. Um, so as of January 6, 2014, our monitoring showed elevated levels were still continuing. And the data that we uh, looked at uh, the ACE site was four miles from Limerick. Okay. okay. Now, there were some other sites that were part of the, the data analysis as well, but a couple of things happened here. Um, this RAT alert, this RAT alert 50, is a unit, it's a handheld unit uh, made by uh, International Medcom, and it will allow people to monitor airborne radiation levels on a minute by minute basis. This particular device, this exact device, Nick, has been used by citizens near a number of other nuke plants in the United States. And a court ruling after the Three Mile Island uh, partial meltdown ordered placement of 50 of these same devices mm. at sites around Harrisburg to allow citizens to detect ongoing uh, potential mm. threats. Does it have to be outside for it to be to detect the radiation? No, it does not. Uh, unfortunately, radiation comes to find you pretty much where you are unless you're, okay. in, unless you're I out. mean, I think that's an important part. Oh, yeah. People think may think that they're nope. they're safe in their homes and therefore it doesn't, you know. No, no not exactly. Um, this unit will detect, detect airborne radiation, which will come through a number of 
physical barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, we took all this data, Nick, and it was pretty um, uh, sophisticated, um, almost 43 hours of detailed data collected by uh, ACE members. And uh, what we found was the average was about 20 to 30 percent greater than the typical average that we had seen previously. So obviously something was going on. Right. right. Then we took a look at a, a, a short window between uh, early December, December 2nd to the 4th, uh, 90 of 300 minutes, 30 percent were over 20. Typically only 2 to 3 percent reach something at that level. Right. So this is uh, a significant concern. The highest count was 31, 31 per minute. Uh, more than double the normal level. So obviously something was going on since the 22nd of November and through early January. Um, <clears throat> we took another 60 minutes of data January 6th and 28.3% showed a level of 20 um, or more. Mm -hmm. So pretty consistent, 20 to 30% higher than normal. So what did we do? Well, in addition to turning on machines and activating, you know, collection of data, we contacted the NRC. We contacted them on November 22nd. Um, after four days, somebody finally got back to us. That, that's a little troubling. You know, mm -hmm. if, if a problem happens, I don't know about you, but I would prefer to have an instantaneous response of course. You know, from some regulator. But th obviously that doesn't happen. That was one of the criticisms of Three Mile Island, right? That the exactly. governor waited so long oh, yeah. to notify people of the of the oh, problem that right. was taking place right. there, right? And the, and the governor wasn't notified for days. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so what happened at the NRC? Well, they did no monitoring. Let's make sure that that's clear. They didn't monitor anything. What they did was they decided to talk to Exxon and okay. the Limerick Nuclear Plant. They wanted to take a look at their data and see what they could find or look for a source. You know, the problem is you, know, you can't see radiation and you should not trust Exelon's information. Our website uh, has a, an entire download on why you shouldn't trust Exelon based on what they've done elsewhere. So NRC took a look at the information and said, okay, it doesn't look like a problem to us. We don't see a problem. We don't really know what's happened here. Maybe, you know, you guys, you know, are concerned about something that you shouldn't be concerned about. But when we took a look at the data, the data that they reviewed, which we insisted on seeing, 36% margins of errors allowed Wow! Um, in Exelon's reporting for radiation. 36% margins 36 of errors. 36%. You usually hear a study as well as like a two, one, or, one two. or two, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But 30, 36. 36. Right? You know, okay. it, it's, it's kind of like the old Maxwell Smart. Just <laughs> missed it by that much, right? right? Exactly. Um, Radiation monitoring equipment left inoperable for more than an entire calendar year in the, the data that we were able to get our hands on. Radiation dose factors omitted for the last five weeks of 2010 reporting. So their philosophy is, you know, close enough. Well, they looked at this information, accepted it, uh, accepted the allowance margins, mm -hmm. and then said, well, we think one of two things happened. And their, their answers or illogical excuses were, number one, natural radiation, or number two, electrical surges. Okay. Um, needless to say, neither one of those you know, would hold uh, more than three drops of water, much less you right. know, any, any credible amount right, of water. Exactly. Naturally occurring radiation is exactly what it is, you know. It doesn't change dramatically over time. Maybe over 5,000 years it'll change a little bit. Right. But if it's naturally occurring in an area, that's not changing much. What changes is what comes out of this plant. The second thing, the second explanation that they attempted to sell to our uh, community was, well, maybe electrical surges bothered your readings. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, these are not electrically powered. They're battery-operated so units. Totally bogus reason. Totally bogus. Right. Big time bogus. World class bogus. <laughs> o for two. Um, we think we know what may have attributed uh, the spikes here. We think there's a, every re reason to believe that Limerick started to use what's known as high burn up fuel, which can release two to three times more radioactive fission gas. Okay. I mean, and, it seems logical. It seems to make yeah, sense. So I want yeah. to back up for a second. Sure. Is it typical for NRC not to monitor radiation around a nuclear power plant and to rely on the information that the plant operators or the owners uh, give to NRC? Yeah, sadly, that's typical. They, they do not. So there's no independent monitor, no, monitoring no, in that sense no, then? None. 
No, the the only independent monitoring occurs when when uh, citizens groups you know come up with data and put it in front of the NRC. Well, that should be the first red flag, isn't it, for NRC? That, so they don't really do their own monitoring. Right. They're trusting the information of the of the company that has the vested interest in not giving you necessarily the totally true information. Bingo, as cousin Eddie would say. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Amazing. Exactly right. Um, the other thing that, that I think we need to consider, and we've talked about this in some previous blogs and, and reports, you know, this is an aging, corroding facility mm -hmm. with deteriorating reactors. You know, they've been in operation 24 and 29 years. Really? Uh, they could very easily be leaking. That's happened you know, at a number of other sites uh, in this country. Um, you know, why is this important? Well, you know, if there are releases, that means there are harmful health impacts. Mm -hmm. So the higher the releases, the greater the, greater, the harms, right. the greater the harmful health impacts. You know, we, I'm hoping that we have a graphic that we can provide as part of this video that we call Radiation Woman. I mean, nope. We've used that in some other programs right. where you see all the different places in the human body that radiation attacks you right. and causes all kinds of, you know, just horrific health problems and cancers and, and other kinds of serious problems. This community has had a well-documented health crisis with cancers uh, and particularly childhood cancers at j just awful levels, horrific mm. levels, tremendously high levels. Childhood cancer is 92.5% higher than the national average um, when we did some of the analysis. And there's some coordination, I mean, there's coordination between when the plant opened and the skyrocketing uh, incidence of cancers. Yeah, um, interestingly enough, it's almost a linear correlation. Plant opens in 1985, and operates and cancers go up, you know, in, in an mm -hmm. almost exact parallel wow. uh, configuration. So every every day, every month, every year that this plant has operated, cancers have gone up. Mm -hmm. And that'll continue unless something happens. Now, there is a lot of information, Nick, on the ACE website, www.acereport.org. We would recommend a couple of our, our uh, research downloads. Number There's a research download, number one, on radiation. There's a number two on cancer and the skyrocketing increases. And then there's one, uh, number three, which is radiation, no safe dose. Mm -hmm. So in, in the uh, one of the previous blogs that we've done, we've talked about the power of elected officials to speak right. out right. and to make the changes. <clears throat> and what about individuals? Uh, do you recommend people get one of these <clears throat> RAD alerts? Is it something that people can buy? Should they? How do they protect themselves? And I mean, how does that work? Is that there, something we would want them to do? There are a couple of things that could happen. I mean, pe people could purchase their own and become part of the monitoring network at ACE. They can um, email us uh, or call us. Our contact information is going to be available on the, pay on the, the, the screen here throughout this program. But um, the other thing that we're suggesting is, I mean, right now we are the only defense mm -hmm. citizens, people like us. We're suggesting that maybe... Um, there's a pretty strong need for another level of support, and we want uh, people to contact their elected officials and ask for support for a citizen radiation monitoring system. That would make sense. That would make sense. I Absolutely. mean, it happened around TMI. It could happen here. So state and federal officials could easily uh, advocate, support, and promote funding for mm -hmm. the radiation monitoring system the second part of this this model right now nick we think is that we need a county reporting and notification system you know and there's already a structure the infrastructure is there just think about this anytime we have high ozone levels or high um, mold levels or or pollen levels you can get an alert right the same kind of system could include an alert and notification for high radiation. So what we're suggesting is that um, Chester County and Montgomery County should both implement the same kind of notification system. I mean, if, if we've got 50 miles radius around the planet, that includes 8 million people, the major Philadelphia market share, right. um, there's no reason why every notification system, every public broadcast notification system, shouldn't include this. We just have about 30 seconds. It may be a final thought before we have to leave in this segment. Well, I mean, this this is an eye-opener. I mean, if this doesn't increase your, your pulse rate, I don't know what it's going to take. You know, we've seen radiation spikes that are, you know, much higher. 
20 to 30 percent of all of the mo the monitored data is like twice what it mm -hmm. typically has been in the past mm -hmm. and and uh, that's cause for alarm that's cause for action you know contact ace contact state officials contact federal officials we need to get um, a much better handle on this and notify people so that they can protect themselves i mean it, this video blog is going to include some some um, text material as well and the website has okay. more i want to thank you for all this great information in this particular segment folks don't forget go to the website acereport.org acereport.org watch this video blog and other segments as often as you can and tell everyone about it this is nick lawrence we'll see you the next time on the ace video blog